We do love you and we praise you. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you are about to do in our hearts even more. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that dwells in us, walks among us, and is here to teach us. So right now, we just bring every thought captive. We lay down everything, all the concerns, all the worries. We lay them at your feet, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your voice, to hear your word, and have our hearts and lives transformed, literally in your presence. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, we're going to dive right into God's word. How many of y'all like to, when you hear the word of God, and then you're often like, well, how do I put that into practice? What do, I hear something I like what I hear. I mean, you, can we agree? Sometimes you like the Word of God. You like what you hear from the Word of God, right? Sometimes we don't necessarily like it, but we know in our heart it's what we need, right? And then we have to adjust. So this morning, I want to help us grow in a particular area, and I'm going to give you opportunity to plant. No, well, first you're going to receive seed. You're going to receive seed so that your future will be better. How many of y'all want to walk in the will of God a month from now? Amen. Any takers? How many of y'all want faith to walk in the will of God a month from now? Okay. Now, see, I, I, I can't at this point promise you tomorrow because I don't know what seed you've put in the ground. I don't know what you're going to harvest this afternoon or what you're going to harvest tomorrow. But I'm going to give you seed. I'm going to give you the word of God that if you receive the word of God and as the Holy Spirit begins to work it in you and reveal it to you, as you seek him and find him, as he begins to draw you to him and you begin to lean in and obey the voice of God and follow him in your life, You'll reap the harvest of the seed that you received. Am I making sense? Are you following? So, there is an unknown clicking back here. Like, really strange. Um, okay, well, I don't know how to fix it. Maybe Bill knows, but I'm not going to worry about it. We're going to move on. So go with me to 1 Thessalonians 5. I want to look first in verse 23. I want to look first in verse 23, if we could. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you. And everybody knows, we all know, we've been in church long enough. If you don't, here it is. May the God of peace sanctify you completely. That means make you whole, sanctify you, make you whole, make you complete, and, and sanctify us to set apart. May he set you apart, and may he make you whole, all right? So may the God of peace, notice the God, is you, do you serve a God of peace? So we're going to begin to answer even the question of how good is your God? Is your God that good? Because I serve a good God. I, okay. Hallelujah. All right. Um, go back with me in there. Let's see. Um, may he sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls is faithful. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to read a little bit farther, and we're going to get back to this. Brethren, I pray, brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with a holy kiss. Look at verse 27. I charge you by the Lord this to read. I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read to all the brethren. Some translations put holy brethren. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now, mm, hallelujah. 
How many of you would like to know how to grow not only in your faith, but in your action, in the things that you do in your life? Again, in two months, how many of you are willing to be thankful even though it's not Thanksgiving? Okay? I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to help you here. We want to get seed for thankfulness. We're going to understand that being thankful produces faith. <clears throat> being thankful changes your life. I, I'm going to say it this way, and maybe you'll, you'll ha help me. How many of y'all know the... Mm, be real careful there, Paul. It's not hard to say, and many can say, Change your words and change your life. Okay? Change your words and change your life. I want to make that biblical. Because while changing your words will change your life, you can easily change your words in the arm of your flesh. But if you'll change them by the Spirit of God, you're actually going to change your heart Therefore, changing your life. Am I making sense? See, we okay. Let's let's do it this way. Let's go with me to verse um, sixteen of First Thessalonians five, verse sixteen. This uh, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. These are our primary scriptures that we want to look at, and we're going to look at them in in a couple of aspects here. Verse sixteen of First Thessalonians five says, "Rejoice always." Easy verse. Rejoice always. Even if you have dyslexia, you can still be obedient to this verse. Rejoice always. Always rejoice. It's easy. But is it? Is it easy to rejoice? Look at the next part. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Now here it is. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And, and if I can get there today, I'm going, to hold, I'm going to show you that we don't give thanks for everything. We give thanks in everything. And there is a difference. Jesus said, right here, the head of the church, writes through the Apostle Paul, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Verse 19, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecy, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now, you don't want to separate any of these things out. They, they kind of run together for a reason. And because we don't have time, I really wanted to start in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 1. But we had never got to here. So I encourage you this next week, go back, start at least in verse 1, and begin to just slowly read through 1 Thessalonians 5. And see the build up to this verse. See what's, what the Holy Spirit is building in you and through you. Allow him to make this work. Because remember, we want seed for thankfulness. Well, faith cometh by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So if you want to reap being thankful and you want to do it not by might nor by power, but by his spirit. That's what Zechariah 4, um, 6, I believe it is. I, I, I think I gave you that. Zechariah 4, 6 says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Now, a number of weeks ago, we looked at the fact that and, and we've done it over and over. We are a spirit. We have a soul, which is our mind, our will, and our emotions. And we live in a body. And we, we've been understanding and learning that while we, it's easy for us to follow our mind, our will, and our emotions, those are super easy to do because they're in there out loud. If we've been hurt and something happens to us, we respond from the hurt, not from the Spirit of God. 
But as we learn to turn to the Word of God and we fix our eyes on the Word of God and we begin to find out what God's Word says about who we are, who He is, and what He's doing in us and through us, when a problem or a challenge comes along, we don't ignore the challenge, we don't ignore the problem, but we look to Jesus, we look to the Word of God. It's the same faith that Peter had to have in the midst of the storm. He saw Jesus. And then he asked the most obvious question. If it's you, Lord, bid me come. There was only one answer Jesus could say. Right? Yeah. I mean, here's Peter. He's afraid. I'm sure at some point at this, at this point in time, Jesus had said, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And even if he hadn't said those very words, they were still life. Because they were spoken. That would connect later. See, God's word didn't become true when it was penned. <clears throat> oh, thank you, Jesus. All right. How do we receive a thankful heart. How do we really and truly learn that no matter what's going on, when we're dealt bad news, when we're dealt good news, when we come across a challenge, when we come across a problem, whatever we feel in our in our in our five senses, whatever we see, taste, touch, or feel, all those things in the hearing, no matter what, how do we learn to be to stop and be thankful, but not by force of our flesh? but by faith, by the word of God. And there is a difference. That's why I said, if we change our words, we'll change our life. That is a true statement. But go with me to Proverbs. Look at, look at Proverbs chapter 4. Keep your finger in 1 Thessalonians if you have a flip paging paper Bible. The rest of you use your technology and go with me to uh, Proverbs chapter 4. I believe I want to start first in um, verse 20. Let's look at that real quick. This is not new. Many of you have heard this. Many of you have looked at this. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Notice this. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them. And health to all their flesh. Look at verse 23. Keep your hearts with all diligence. Some translations say guard your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart, guard your heart with all diligence. What does that look like in your everyday life? All right, now, let, me, let me read on. Let me finish this and then we'll come back to it in just a second. Um, verse 23, keep your heart with all diligence for out of them springs the issues of life. Put away from you deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. So we've just connected what goes on in your heart into the issues of life. For out of the abundance of the heart flows the issues of life. How many of you would like an issue of thankfulness? How many of you would like the opportunity to be thankful sincerely? Not, okay, I'm just going to be thankful because God's word tells me I have to be. Am I the only one that's had to do that? See, that can easily fall into a work of flesh. Because if I say it long enough and say it loud enough, I might convince myself. But when the word of God has gone into us and we meditate on God's word, it begins to change. Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So what does that look like? As I meditate on God's word, we know in Joshua 1.8, it says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but meditate on it day and night. For then you, you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Is that any different than what it says right from here? Look at verse 23, I believe it is. Keep uh, over 20. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. Proverbs 4, 20. Give attention to my word. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. 
What are we doing to keep God's word in the midst of our heart? What are we allowing to come into our heart? What are we allowing to come in through our eye gate, our ear gate, our, our touch gate? What are we allowing to come in? Is it God's word? Is it the word of God so that our lives are transformed? Because as we hear the word of God and we meditate on God's word, we already have at least two promises. And I haven't even shown you the promise in the New Testament of the same, of the same effect. God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. But, the, but if you'll meditate on it day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Right? Now, if we look here, the writer of Proverbs says... Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life to those who find them. Notice they're not life to just anybody. They are life to those who find them. Those who apply them. Those who hear them and allow them to change the way we respond. The way we think. The way we hear. The way we do. Again, not because we twist your arm. But by the Spirit of God. By Christ in you. The hope of glory. See, the word of God, if you're born again, the word of God dwells in you. The very word of God dwells in you. So all truth, all understanding, it's in there. But mining it out is the challenge. Working it out, hearing it with your real ear, understanding it, and aligning yourself with God's word, that becomes the challenge. Look at 23. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. And what I want to help us do right now is have an issue of thanksgiving, have an issue of thankfulness in our near present future. Some of you are wanting to know how to have an issue of a, oh, all right, I'll put it this way. How many of you would like your spouse to be thankful for you on February 14th? No, no, no. I'm, I'm just taking what's in the world. See, I personally hate Valentine. I, I hate it. I've always despised this, this holiday. And, it, and, it's, and it's not necessarily a good thing that I, I have these feelings about them. I'm just being open with you here, okay? However, if my wife needs love and she needs to know that I love her and I want her to know that, what does that look like? Well, in the world, it means go buy her flowers or do chocolates or take her out for a nice dinner. Well, let's go beyond that. How about she knows it on February, uh, what is today, just in case? Six. How about if she knows it on February 7th? How about if she knows about it on February 28th? February 22nd is an amazing day of the year. Two, 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 two. Two, 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 two. 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 All twos. Will you be thankful on all the twos? Will you be thankful? Only if you have a heart of thankfulness and a fruit of the Spirit. Because you receive the seed, which is the Word of God, which produces fruit. This is, this is called mind renewal, not replacement. This is called renewing our mind. This is called changing our lives and allowing them to line up with God's word. Now, um, I wanted to show you. Oh, verse 4. Can you pull up Proverbs 4.4? 4, 4? I think I had that on here. Proverbs 4.4. 4. There it is. He also taught me. This is He said, the Lord taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. There's a little indication here that if we're not doing the other, there's an issue. You see what I'm saying? You, you want to know why? I mean, I, I'm not. Okay. Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. They are life. It says the same thing over. We just read it in what, what verse 20? 20. 20. Give attention on my word. Incline your ear to my saying. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Verse 22. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. God's word will change you from the inside out if you will allow it. You can be thankful no matter what comes along. 
Again, we're going to distinguish between being thankful for something and being thankful in something. Because I don't give thanks for what is not from God. I don't give thanks for what has the image of the world on it. I don't give thanks for what has the image of the, the deceiver. I don't give thanks for those things. I give thanks in the situation for the grace of God to go through the situation. Am I making sense? Are you following me? Let me show you this in the scripture because I can see some of you are struggling with this. Go with me first of all to Mark chapter 12. Let's look together at Mark chapter 12. I think we want to pick it up at about verse 16. Mark chapter 12. <clears throat> And um, I, I didn't have her pull verse 15, so I'm just going to read it to you. Verse 15, um, 15 says, um, But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius and, and that I may see it. So that, verse 16, so they brought it to him. They brought him a denarius. They've asked him, Are we supposed to pay taxes? Are we supposed to pay taxes? I know it. April 15th is coming up. Scripture says, render to Caesar what is Caesar's, but not a dime more. All right, that's all I got for funny. I know Pastor Mark likes to lead with the funny. That's all I got. Verse 16, and they brought it to him and said to him, whose image and inscription is this? And they said to him, Caesar's. Verse 17, and Jesus answered and said to them, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And to God, the things that are God's. If it's from Caesar, give him, give him honor to it. It's Caesar's. Give it to him. Give it back to him. It's Caesar's. I'll, I'll, I'll say it again. If it's from the world, give it back to the world. If it's from God... Give him thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory. Because there's, the scripture is so full of the goodness of God and the promises of what God wants to do in us and through us while the enemy is coming to steal, kill, and destroy. But God came that we might have life and life more abundantly. That's why Jesus came. That we would not have to live in the world of sin and stupid. Is that making sense? Are you with me still? Now, he's told them, render to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. Now, I, I, uh, Philippians chapter 4. Go with me there. And I, I know some of you have a scripture going off in your head and I'm going to get there. You're just going to have to trust the Holy Spirit here. Philippians chapter 4. Now, here's another one that I spent all of Thursday just Philippians. I think it was Thursday, Philippians. I started in four. Holy Spirit says you need to back up to the beginning. And I went, oh, cool. I love Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> second vote, second joke. Sorry. That's it. I, I, I will, I'll try not to do any more. So I started in Philippians chapter one. And I allowed the Holy Spirit to just show me some amazing stuff in his word and change the way I think, change the way I respond because I knew what he was saying here in verse four. See, Philippians chapter four, verse eight is the fulfillment of Joshua one eight. It's the same thing. Let's start in verse, uh, Philippians chapter four, verse eight. Um, actually, first, I said four and eight. I need to start in verse six, so just bear with me because I didn't ask her to do it. Be anxious for nothing. Does that, do you realize that when it, Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing. When you hear that from, from within, when the Holy Spirit takes that off in you, when it becomes fruit in your life, no matter what comes, you can go, mm -mm. thank you, Holy Spirit. Let the peace of God fill my heart and fill my life. God's word says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. See, he just, this is faith 
Faith right here is to be anxious for nothing is when those words become life to us. They're not just words on a page. They are words from God. But in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And check this out, verse 7. And let the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, that ought to bring faith and hope to your life right there. The peace of God, which supplies, which is above. What's the right word? Surpasses, thank you. Surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds through Christ Jesus. So there's a guarding of your heart by his word and by not being anxious for anything. But we can in our flesh go, I'm not going to be anxious, bless God. God's going to get him. <laughs> Might be a little anxious there. Yeah. Right? Because we don't fight flesh and blood. But you don't understand. Flesh and blood is what's up in my face. I know. We don't fight flesh and blood. Is that making sense? So, so let's go on to verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report. So that means turning ABC, CBS, NBC, and any other initials probably of the, of the 10 spies network. Just turn them off. Right? Okay. You, you, some of you know what I just said. If there, if there be a good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Meditate on these things. So what does these things? Go back to the beginning of that list. Whatsoever things are true. So here's, here's faith in action. Someone comes, they, you have a conversation. Is this true? How long do I meditate on this? If it's not true. Whatever things are, uh, uh, things are, are noble. Whatever things are, are just. Whatever things are pure. Whatever things are lovely. See, it's easy to meditate on all the stuff that's going on in our culture. All the stuff that's going on in our world. All the stuff that's going on in our job. We do it all the time. He said, she said, well, I'm going to say this. The next time they say this, I'm going to do this. The next time they come to me and want to argue scripture, this is what I'm going to throw at them. Hmm. Oh, see, you, you thought I was only talking about the bad things. Am I making sense? See, what is playing over in your heart and in your mind? If the word of God is playing over in your heart and in your mind, you are now receiving the word of God. You're meditating on his word. It's coming in. You're meditating on it. And the word of God is, is uh, true. It's noble. It's uh, uh, pure. It's things of, of lovely. It's of good report. It's a, a virtue. It's praiseworthy. We meditate on these things. Verse 9, these things which you have learned. Now check this out. Which you have learned and heard and saw in Pastor Mark. These do. So no, no, no. Who wrote this? Jesus. Amen. The bride. I'm sorry. The, the, the husband. My bad. Dyslexic. We're the bride. The head of the church wrote this. He penned it through man. But Jesus said, Jesus is the one who says right there, these things which you have learned, received, and heard, and saw in me. Isn't that what, I mean, we pinned it, we put it on our shirt. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? Well, right here. He's saying, look at this. These things you heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Isn't that part of the goal? We want that God of peace. We want to be able to, to have the peace of God. We want to be able to be thankful. We want to be able to walk things out no matter what we see, what we hear. See, if you go back into here in, in, in Philippians, we learned about being anxious for nothing. Oh, I can't get tied up in here. I better just stay focused. 
I, I had such a good time in Philippians, the whole, the whole book. So how do we give thanks in all things and distinguish not to give thanks for all things? See, if we don't understand, first of all, and I, I don't have time to explain it today. We, we, you, if you have an ear to hear, you will hear it a lot from, from this pulpit because I believe there's two major things that are taught incorrectly in the body of Christ. And the, the one that just sends me into bunkers land that I just can't wrap my head around it is that everything that's happening is God's will. That no matter what, it's God's will. Then, then we're going to have to take out a whole lot of scriptures that says, find his will, know his will, be obedient to his will. Um, pray that thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, if we believe that everything is happening is just God's mysterious unknown will, then why would he tell us to know the will of the Lord? Why would he tell us to, to follow? We would just wake up and go, well, it's God's will. Why would we even need to pray? Why would we need to ask the Lord? Why would we need to, to why would we need to stand against the powers of darkness? Why would we need to bring every thought captive? Why would we need to, to go to resist the devil? Why would we need to submit to God? It's just God's will. So we, we can get we can, understanding that not everything that happens on the planet is God's will. We have got to understand that some things are of the devil. And, and sin and corruption. But that's because Jesus said, my peace I leave with you. And if we are meditating on his word and we're guarding our heart, no matter what the enemy has for us, then we can submit to God. Resist the enemy. See, if we didn't have to submit to God and resist the enemy, then we could go with the whole everything that's happening is God's will. But you're going to have to take out a whole lot of scripture. And I don't want to do that. I don't want to take out God's word. I need to figure out what God's word is doing in me. And I need to change the way I think, change the way I live so that it lines up with God's word. Amen. Now, go with me to Ephesians. And I, because I promised you I would get you there. Ephesians. Some of you were, were struggling back there. Did I give you an Ephesians chapter? Oh, I didn't. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Look, go with me to Ephesians chapter 5, and she'll catch us in verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So there's one scripture that if we just think everything that's happening is God's will, not only do we need to remove John 10, 10, but we'd have to remove this. Why would he tell us, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is? If it's just all his will, all we got to do is go, well, it's God's will. And it totally removes intimacy with God. It totally removes hearing from God. We don't have a purpose to talk to him if it's just he's puppeting all of us. If he's just going, nope, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, I made you to do this, I made you to do that, and there's no free will. But that's not my God. He created us for the very purpose to walk with him. If you want to know the perfect will of God, you do have to go back all the way to Genesis. And you look in Genesis chapter 1 through, verse, uh, through chapter 2. And right up into the first part of chapter 3. And then you, then you stop. Because when they ate of the fruit, they disobeyed God's will. His word is his will. And he said... Do not eat of this tree. They ate of the tree, and everything changed. Now, if you want to know how, the, how God's will is supposed to be, you can jump to the end in Revelation when he goes, enough is enough. Everyone had their chance, and now I am in charge. I gave you what you wanted. I gave you your free will. Those of you who have chosen to come after me and those of you who have chosen to seek me and find me, we're going to rule and reign forever. 
Those of you who have, of your own will, resisted me. Those of you who have given yourselves uh, to the desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Those of you who have resisted me in every challenge, every time the Holy Spirit draws, you said no, you said no, and I never forced you. Yes. Now, here is your reward. You asked for it, and I'm giving it to you. See, the most dangerous judgment that can happen to man is that we give, that God give us what we want before our minds are renewed, before we align ourselves with his word, before we know what God is and who he is and his purpose. See, then we walk with him, and it's going to be good. It will be good. I, I, I get it. Challenges, tough times. Jesus had him. He had all the crazy people around him. <laughs> Have you ever considered what happened to Jesus the first 30 years of his life? Before he was anointed? Before he was water baptized? He, he did one thing. He sought God. He sought the word. He heard the word of God. He discovered who he was. He discovered what God had done. It told him to go do, but he had to grow in that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we're going to have to come back to that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I didn't finish here. Verse 17. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Do not be drunk with wine in which is dis, dispen, dis, I can never say that word. It ain't a good idea. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, and making melody in your heart to the Lord. giving Now here it is. Giving thanks to God for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice this here. Give thanks always for all things to God the Father. This goes back to render to Caesar what is Caesar's. See, this doesn't say give thanks to the devil. It doesn't say even give thanks to God for the stupid stuff the devil did. We're told to resist him. Amen. Submit to God and resist the devil. So we don't need to get tied up with giving God, the, oh, thank you, Jesus, I got cancer. No. no. Cancer didn't come from God. Amen. It's from the world. It's from the curse. It's from the enemy. Amen. It's sickness. It's disease. So while if, if cancer has taken over our body, we don't give thanks for that. We give thanks for the grace of God. We give thanks for the healing that Jesus gave. We give thanks for the, for the mercy and the grace. We give thanks for healing. We give thanks to Jesus. Yes. That's what we give thanks for. So when things come at us in a month from now, see, I'm believing God right now that we don't start thanking God and giving thanks from the fruit of thankfulness in November. Mm -mm. No, I want a quicker harvest. Because I'm trying to help us. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I told you we're going to start talking and, and opening up what God's word says about praise and worship. And the difference in, in what worship looks like and what praise is and, and all these things. Let me give you a little hint. It begins with thankfulness. So if we want to understand how to really worship God. We have to first learn how to be thankful. And if we're really going to learn how to be thankful, and we're going to be transformed to be in thankful people, that means we're not doing it in the lust in the flesh. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. That's what God said. Christ lives in you. He wants you to be thankful. He wants you. And faith to be thankful comes from hearing what the word of God says comes from being able to hear in everything, in everything, give thanks. So that does mean that when there's a challenge, there's a, oh, I'll use me so none of y'all get mad. You know, this last week up, up till right now, we've had a, lot, a, a little bit different freedom in my place of employment. And to protect the guilty and the innocent, I'll leave their name out of it. But on my mission field, <clears throat> y'all know what I just said, right? But in, but in my mission field... We've had this freedom. Well, because, because of the fear that's going on in our culture, all of a sudden we were given another rule, another mandate, another 
demand. And I didn't like it. I didn't like it. In my flesh, I didn't like it. But as soon as I was told about this new rule, I went, I said, yes, ma'am, tell me what I need to do. Now, how did I get to that? I can guarantee you it wasn't meditating on the stupidness. It was from meditating on God's word. Did I enjoy it? Did I like it? Am I thankful for it? No, I'm thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful to God for the grace to do what was asked of me to do, even though I know it's a stupid thing. But I also had the opportunity to be Light and salt in the midst of a perverse generation. Remember I shared with you a number of months ago how it was told to me in my workplace, on my mission field, an individual who thought I was always a complainer. Remember that I, I shared with you? And, and I didn't like that word. He goes, Paul, all you ever do is come in here and complain. And I went, what? I, 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 I'm like, I'm in awe. I mean, he just, that's all you ever do is complain. I'm like, for reals? That's how you see me? I'm like, wait, that doesn't line up with what I believe. That doesn't line up with what I think. But I stopped in that moment and, and the Holy Spirit said, just listen. And I looked at him and I listened to him and I looked him right now and I said, do you really see me that way here as a complainer? And he goes, yes, I do. And I said, you know what? I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that because I, don't, I do not want to be known to you as a complainer. I didn't argue with it. And this guy, he needs Jesus in so many ways like, like everybody else around us. But I didn't dismiss where he was. You, am I making sense? I chose to take an opportunity to humble myself and hear from God. So here we are six months later, same group of people. And boy, would it have been easy to just complain about a new rule. <laughs> it wouldn't have got me anywhere. Good. But somebody had to be guarding their heart. Somebody had to be giving thanks. Somebody had to be willing to take what they hear and go, mm, well, that's not from God. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. You have called me. You have anointed me. You have placed me on the mission field here. And I get to walk with you through this challenge. Am I making sense? See, this is, this is truly taking God's word, hearing it, and letting it change our lives. So this next week, don't do it in the arm of the flesh. Because you'll only get the arm of the flesh for so long. You only get that fruit for so long. See, I could have picked any subject, but many of you would have felt that. I picked a subject by God that we all truly, I believe you do want to be a thankful people. And you know why I can say that? Because you're here. And you're hearing God. And God's word says be thankful. And so therefore there's the faith to do it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can be thankful. I may have to be slow to speak, slow to wrath, and quick to listen until the fruit of thankfulness begins to rise up in me. But that lines up with guard your heart. So does that make it sense? So what's coming at you? If these things from the Philippians 4, if they're not good, if they're not virtuous and those things, begin to cut them off, begin to get them out. Look at what's... There's another in Philippians here. I'll try to land. Give them a warning. I'm going to land the plane. There was a, an amazing script. Oh, I'm not in Ephesians. I'm not in Philippians. Mm, Philippians. Philippians chapter 4, I believe. Let's look. I, I highlighted this new because I was hesitant to, to share it with you. Because it somewhat sounds greedy. But I like it. Mm. I guess we're going to just leave it. You go read Philippians you're going to find some neat stuff in there. But it's going to help you this way. How many of y'all really want to grow this way too? See, we have to grow this way. This is with you, me and Jesus. 
But the, the growth that comes this way is because you're submitted this way. Christ in you. Christ in you can help me grow. But I have to learn how to submit to Christ in you. You have to learn how to submit to Christ in me. But if we're looking into God's word, we'll begin to see Christ in one another. And we can begin to walk in that. But if we're just looking at the things of this world and we're not guarding our heart, there's where the issues of life will come from. Uh, I'll ask you again. Let's stand and let's agree. How many of y'all want an issue in your life of thankfulness? Do you want to be thankful from, not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of God? If you want to truly be thankful by the Spirit of God, Receive the seed that was put before you today. Receive this word. And when I say that, that means you going, yes, Lord. I don't understand it all yet. I don't know how this works in me. I thought I was a thankful kind of guy. But that just means we get more. 30, 60, or 100. What do you want? You want to settle for 30%? You want to settle for 60%? Or do you want to go all the way to 100? I don't know about you, but I'd like to reap a hundredfold return. Amen? Oh, you thought I was taking an offering. Father, we love you and we praise you. I thank you for your faithfulness to us. I thank you for your word. And Lord, this morning we receive the word of God. We receive seed for thankfulness. True thankful, not by might nor by power, but by your spirit. May we follow you. May we hear you and follow you and be truly thankful to you and from you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Hug somebody's neck and